Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. How you doing? This is Reverend Eric. Uh, sorry for the hiatus. Uh, going through some training, going through some some serious uh, hardships, uh, financial, health-wise. You know, you name it. The gambit has been spoken about. Um, and I apologize for being away so long, but uh, I just want you to know I love you very much, and I am here and back and devoted and dedicated as ever. Uh, not that it ever changed, but uh, I can tell you one thing. It's very tough, and I'm sure uh, all of you can relate to just how hard it is to function as a Christian in a world that really does not offer anything of value to us whatsoever. And what I mean by that, when I say world, I have to be clear. We're talking about the world of the, of the flesh, you know, the, the fleshly mind, the carnal mind, you know, the um, the thing that drives this world are the big three. Now, being from San Antonio, when we say the big three, we're talking about Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. Of course, now in this day and age, we also have this Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, and Tony Parker. Uh, Ginobili's still there, so maybe the powerful four. But anyway, trying try to get off subject. But just, we named the big three, even in your town, you know, whatever town you're listening to, if you have a favorite soccer team or a favorite NFL team, there's always three names that comes to mind, always. Um, and that number is very significant, and as it should, because it's the perfection of the Trinity as well, but it just happens to be that way. But the big three I'm referring to are the big three that literally we go to war with every day. It can sometimes rob us of our Christian peace. It can most of the time it robs us of our Christian peace. But what it truly really does, it erodes at our our sense of well-being. I mean, it is hard living in a world that pretty much rejects you on general principle. You know, all Christians are are, are are fake. They don't, you know, y'all don't do the things that are that that are righteous. Y'all don't act a certain way. You know, you've heard it. You know, all Christians are hypocrites. No, not all of us are hypocrites. That is a great truth that I can lay to rest right now. Not all Christians are hypocrites. There's some of us. You know, and then when you just speak of evangelicals, which uh, kind of the best way to put it is, I will say, when you address, you know, as something as evangelical, where sometimes that comes at a, at a price. And what I mean by that is, you know, very, very few times, and especially during this election coming up, uh, that Donald Trump is talking about, he's talking to evangelicals, but what he's speaking about doesn't address anything that Christ addresses. And I'm not trying to get into this political soapbox. I'm just telling you, there's a huge disparity between Christianity and what people call evangelicals. Uh, and what I mean by that is they have the evangelicals have a perception of what a Christian looks like. Even that's by skin tone, that's by divine rights or things of that nature. So uh, the evangelicals fall into the same category as regular Christians do. You know, the truth. When I say that, I mean the true believing. Those that have suffered and are suffering with Christ as we're trying to do right. Those that are suffering because we can't necessarily know what it's like to live in complete unity. I mean, the Christian body seems so segmented and so torn in so many different directions. The truth is, it's not. By appearances, it may look that we're going in two different directions. But the truth is, we're not. We're just starting to cut through the the, the the, to the bone and see who's who's real and who isn't. That's really what this is all boiling down to. Who is, who are the reals and who are the fakes? You know, who are those that are standing with Christ and who are going to uh, fight for, for fight for the truth? Who's not going to just you know succumb to whatever the newest doctrine of the day is? Um, we're, we're talking about some true Bible believing, truthful speaking Christians. Those who, who fight the good fight, 
those who struggle and strive to do what's right in God's eyes, those who believe in our Bibles, those that believe that we do have a chance at doing great things in this world. And the greatest thing we can do is rescue another, to spread and share the truth of God. What a beautiful thing. But let me go back to the struggle that we suffer with. That struggle is huge, and that struggle goes into the big three. The big three. Now, what are those big three? You can turn to 1 John 2, 15, and 17, and we're going to talk about it. Now, one of the things that I, I and my Bible is going to be slightly different from yours because I read from the Holman Christian Standard. I do love my King James, don't get me wrong. Um, I do it for clarity's sake. Um, I know I used to be very hard on people for, you know, King James only, and I believe it's a very strong Bible. Never changed that at all. Nothing will change my mind on that. But um, one of the greatest things that I want to basically talk about is those big threes. Those big threes have a lot to do with why we suffer as Christians in our life. And basically what that is, is that we suffer with the fact that, see, what gives us love and joy, and this is, oh, I'm so sorry, this is connecting to the, you know, the, the keys to Christian peace in Jesus Christ. These are the things that I want to uh, share with you that we know we're on, to, we're on a subject, we're on point. So the big three comes out of First John. And as we, we take a look at our passage, I want to just add in, what does it mean and why is it that we suffer the way we do in a world where even we don't even see our brothers and sisters as much as we want to. We don't see enough of them standing up for the Lord. We don't see enough of them defending us. We don't see enough of that happening daily in our lives, enough to where we won't feel so ragged and, and, and split. So, as I sit here today, I, I want to tell you that I, I can give some insight into why it's so difficult for these things to happen. Why it's so difficult. So, 1 John 2, 15, 17. Do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For everything that belongs to the world, and here we go. Now, that part right there kind of set everything up. When you say the world, we're talking about the flesh. We're talking about those that are that, that are knee deep in the world that don't see issues with, you know, I ain't got a problem with adultery. I ain't got a problem with, with this sin or that sin. I ain't got no issue with homosexuality. You know, anything that we buy into, that the world buys into, Christians, we can't. We can't buy into that. That ain't, that ain't gonna do with us no more. But yet and still, we're so pushed on the fringes that we don't even get the companionship and friendships and benefit from those. And this is in the Christian body. So we can't go to the world because the world can't give us anything but poison. We go inside the Christian body and now you can, we can't even tell who's who sometimes. But yeah, we can split that up. We can split that up. I'm going to show you how. The big three, those these big three fundamentals... If you see them being embraced, which includes by us, you know, there's times when we fall victim to this. Don't don't think that you're not going to fall victim to these things that's happening. But I want to give you some insight on how to combat it. Okay, it, it's going to be a struggle. All right, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be hard. It's going to be, you know, at times where you feel like you just have to, just can't do it. You know, I just have to give in. You know, it's like a, you know, I guess like an alcoholic's pull. You know, they just want to feel something of, a, of comfort. So what robs us of our comfort in Jesus Christ? What robs us of that is that comfort? Well, here it is. I'm going to do it. We're going to talk about it. For everything that belongs to the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away the one who does God's will remains forever. Now, that is a mouthful right there. So, 
Anytime we are not partaking in the Christian peace, and we're not getting the Christian peace that we so desperately want, that, that Christ promised us, I give you the peace and my joy. You know, we the only reason that the only thing, the reason that we can't feel that joy is because we gotta remember, brothers and sisters, we've been feeding off of the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle our whole life. It is literally the poison that we're taking into our body so much that when we're finally saved and pulled apart from this world, it's a violent collision. It's like literally getting yanked from the world, but yet our flesh is still here, but our spirit is cleaned into heaven. We have a longing in our soul that to a place we've never been, but it's promised to us. And John 14, John 14 says that so eloquently. Go ahead, let's get, let's go ahead and go to this. Put your thumb there. Let's go to John 14. And now. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. So Christ is telling us what? That he's in heaven building our own homes. He's a, a regular DIY HDTV, you know, is, is being built. You know, we get to we get to sometimes feel that 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 what it's going that peace, what it's gonna be like in heaven. And you know how it feels like? We can't quantify with our thought process. Matter of fact, when it happens, we get terrified because we've never felt peace. I mean, think about it, brothers and sisters. Can you imagine? Just think, just close your eyes and imagine what it's gonna be like. To not be concerned about where your money's coming from, where the bill's going to get paid, car note may get a repossession. You don't know what if you can put the baby through, through school, your health, mama's health, there's no more death. I mean, we can't even conceive that in our minds because it's too large for us. It's too big for us to think about it. But that peace lives inside of us. So the question is, are you going to take it? Are you going to take that peace that God has promised? Are you going to take that peace? So what prevents us from having that peace? The biggest issue that prevents us from having that peace is because we're still focused on the things that give our flesh pleasure. When the world, the world doesn't heal anything. Okay, that's the first thing I've realized. The world doesn't heal anything. It tells you, I mean, if you want to know how the world saw puts a band-aid on something, just look at TV. It offers you to do something with your body. The newest craze in diet, the newest craze in gym exercise, the newest craze on looking better. You look younger every day with some chin tucks and, and some all kind of manner of nonsense from, from there. Or buy a new computer, buy a new car, uh, get a new spouse. I mean, what, what's wrong? You know, the old one ain't doing it no good. Get you a new, a new spouse. I mean, you name it. Or take pride in yourself. And I ain't talking about the kind of pride where... You're like, oh my God, you know, you, I'm just saying, you can celebrate your accomplishments. I, I don't think that's a terrible thing. But when you become so enraptured in your person to where, I mean, who likes to be that guy that's constantly talking about how great they are? I mean, everybody's heard that guy and that girl. I'm the greatest thing since skim milk. I'm just the most successful person I know. I mean, I'm always having things. I ain't got no problems in the world. Well, you know why you got no problems? That person ain't got no problems. Because they're not serving God at all. You, you can't be serving God in yourself. Can't work that way. It's got to be one or the other. But I tell you what, nobody seems to care about that nowadays. They want to, everything still lives off the idea that we can do what we want to do. We're, I'm saved, so now I can go partake in, in the world and I ain't got to worry about being infected by it. Yes, you do. You are going to be infected by this world and you still will. Why? Because if you feed those things, 
the big three, remember, the big three, you feed those big three things, lust of the et, let, lust, sorry, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle. If any one of those three things you're partaking in, any one of those things you're partaking in, it is going to ruin your peace. It's going to it's going to ruin your peace. I gotta say it one more time because I want you to listen to me. It's going to ruin your peace. You won't be able to grasp onto something because you don't because there's nothing to grasp. God's not gonna occupy a soul that is tarnished and, and living in sin and filth. You know, the, the more you sin, the farther it seems that God, God is away from you. Now, I'm not saying he's away from you. You can take his hand off your life. But it's going to be hard to listen to him and hear from him. You don't even want to take discipline from him. You just, you just don't want to deal with that no more. But I'm telling you, if you want to know what that peace feels like, you have to always reconnect to God. Always reconnect to God every single day. Romans 12, 2 talks about it. Renew your mind daily. What does that mean? Refresh, reestablish, reestablish, refresh, come back to God every day. That means that there has to be. Can you imagine? He says, renew your mind daily. Can you imagine? That means God knew that this is a daily struggle. It's not the first time God's talking about a daily thing. In the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread the very things that we live through that one day do you know one of the greatest miracles is overlooked mondays everybody hates mondays but guess what it's, it's just a, it's another day that god is telling you to get it right throughout that day seek his face through all that you do quit looking at the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of one lifestyle. Listen for those things that feed one of those three hungry, ravenous problems. It don't take long. Go to your Facebook page. It don't take long. Go to any social media page. You're going to run across the lust of the flesh. Something is going to entice you by the way something looks, is pleasing to the eyes, sounds good. You may start to, to pull up a desire that you want it. Don't need it, but you want it. Knowing your bill situation, knowing your, your health situation. You're diabetic, but I tell you what, it seems like every single commercial that comes on has some, some kind of sugary sweet that's going to put us in kill, put us in a coma and kill us. But man, they sure make it look good. Then they come and say, this is a diabetic, you know, uh, delight. You know, this, 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 this candy cake thing doesn't have any problems with diabetics. Then that real sugar is going to be pretty good. It's got cinnamon, which is a natural, you know, a natural occurring thing that helps with the treating diabetic stuff. Oh, they can make that that strawberry shortcake look great. Knowing full well, there's always a price. There's always a price. And see, that's the thing about sin. This world has tried to mask what sin looks like. They don't want you to think about what the damage that sin can do. They want to tell you how much it's going to make you feel better. You know, everybody's chasing that new car smell constantly. Everybody's chasing after what it felt like to be in that dating situation when, you know, the honeymoon phase. Everybody's looking for that honeymoon phase. That's what they want. Everybody's looking for that. Everybody wants that. They want, they want that feeling of what it's like. And for some, unfortunately, guess what? Drug addiction begins that way, right? Because the first time, nobody sets out to be a, to be someone who wants to be hooked on drugs. Nobody, nobody who you know, seven years old said, I want to be a crackhead. No, what happened was your life was suffering. You was having some, some, some serious issues. Someone offered something, or you may have looked into a drug, and from you looking into that drug, that first hit got you to where you are today. Works for alcoholism, works in adultery, works in any kind of sexual behavior, any sin. Any let me clarify that one more time. Anything that feeds the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and gives you pride in one lifestyle, if it feeds any one of those three, you need to flee. 
You can't partake in, in God's peace if you're still trying to partake in the world's version of what peace looks like. The world does not fix problems for you. It only that tries to mask it with a different deodorant. But at the end of the day, when the deodorant wears off, the stench is still there. I want you to think about that. You, you ever walk around, you know, you smell the dead animal. I'm not trying to gross nobody out, but that's exactly what sin smells like. Now, it can look beautiful. It can look phenomenal. It can taste phenomenal. It can do everything it can, but like I said, it's a mask. Sin is the easiest thing to mask. Why do I say it's the easiest? Because it's the one thing society is also going to help you mask. Okay? Think of Let's say that one more time. Sin is easy to mask because society will help you mask it. That's what it's going to do. Society has its moral code. It's flexible. It's good morals is questionable. It's ideas of right and wrong is in a gray area. They tell you that every day, don't they? Oh, it's just a gray area. No, it's not. It's black and white. It's either all God or it's all devil. There is no middle ground. There's heaven or hell. There's no middle ground purgatory. It's heaven or hell. There is no compromise in that process. And I'm thankful for that. There's no compromise in that process. But doesn't that feel good that you know for a fact that you're going to be okay? Don't that feel good that God knows? He says, I'm going to take care of you. You have my peace. I'm going to be part of your life for the rest of your life. You are my child. You are protected by me. How many, how many Christians? I mean, give a show of hands. Don't be afraid to raise your hand up to listen to the day. Raise your hand if God has rescued you out of a situation that you knew for a fact nobody else was coming. You was in some kind of a hole or some kind of a problem and nobody else was coming. And you've asked and you've begged and you've pleaded. People knew your, their concerns. You knew you, they knew what you was going through and they looked after themselves because it, and I'm going to tell you how it works. They looked after themselves when it goes to those three things. If it's feeding, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of one lifestyle. Well, guess what that means also? That means they didn't want to give up something that gave them pleasure. You know, I, I, going through this, this horrible health situation and a financial situation, I've lost a lot because I couldn't work. You know, trying to get my body right. Trying to get healthy. And I just gave up. I just had to start praying even harder than I was before. And when I say harder, I don't mean like closing my eyes and, 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 and beating my kneecaps up. No, what I mean by that is I, st I stopped trying to get an answer to the issue and just started trusting God more because I'm going to tell you it's tough raise a show of hands what it's like to trust God it's difficult it's not easy because remember he's not going to give us privy to some of the things that he's doing in our life he doesn't owe us a play by play it's like you see on you see on ESPN you know we don't have color commentators we don't have people that's speculating we don't have people that's that, that can give us a, an idea of what something is. We don't have none of that. We have what God says. Trust me as I set the destination for you. We want to go this way, Lord. Okay, but I direct the steps. Lord, I want to go that direction. Okay, but I direct the steps. God directs the steps. Now, here's the question. Here it goes again. When we mess up and get out of that peace with God, it's because we want to go toward what we're used to. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes, and you sure you can all say it together with me? The pride in one lifestyle. See, God ain't feeding that. He's feeding, trust me, I'm going to lead you down the right direction. And we're so not conditioned to love and follow God. We weren't conditioned that way. Look, if your parents raised you in the church, you can still stray. Yes, it can happen. This world will will suffocate the very faith from you if you're not careful. If you start feeding one of those three things, it doesn't matter. One, even if you fed it one percent, if you tasted cyanide and mixed it in your tea, no matter how look, it, you, it, it may not taste like nothing now, but you know you'll end up dead. 
You have to understand nothing that feeds those three things will ever be good to your life. Ever. Never. That's not even how we're built as Christians. We don't enjoy or take joy in any of those things. We can't. Because it doesn't feed us at, at all, ever. It does not feed us. And since it doesn't feed us, it can't be good for us. And if, the, if it can't be good for us, that means God's not going to support it either. So we have to start taking a look at things. We're going to start looking at things the way it truly is. We're going to start looking at it through God's eyes. And we're able to do that by looking through the eyes of Jesus Christ. We can ask that age-old question, what would Jesus do? I can tell you this much. He would not feed your lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of one's lifestyle. He wouldn't feed those things. And he never will feed those things. What he wants to feed you is joy, peace, comfort, love, acceptance, worth, value, concern, compassion, patience. That's what he's going to feed in his, inside you. That's what he's going to feed every day in your life. So, what's some practical steps that we can use? You know, what's, you know what, what, what are the practical things we can do? Pastor Eric, tell me what I can do, because I, I hear what you're saying, and it's not easy. Okay, I, I've tried. I keep going back to the world. You know, I'm just weak. I guess I'm just struggling. Yes, you're struggling. But it does not mean that you're a failure. It does not mean that you're wrong in a sense that, 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 that when you fall victim to, you know, touching one of those three things, it doesn't mean that's the end of the world. You're going to mess up, yes. You're going to slip, yes. It's going to make you uncomfortable, at least it should. If you do anything and not feel sick to your stomach, if you do anything willfully in the sin, does it not make you feel sick in your stomach? Because if it does, that's that is that is the, that's the, the clue that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Okay, so what's some practical steps? You know, that's one of the things I, I did that 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 everybody wants to know. What's a practical way to look at life? Well, here is the three things, and actually, I've been saying this for this whole time. Make a practice to understand the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of one lifestyle. When those three things are in being infected into your life, when you start feeding one of those three things, or even worse, two of those three things, let me tell you what's going to trigger. Now, we're going to go to our Bibles. I said I'm going to jump around today, but you know, I'm going to jump. We're going to go to a famous passage. Everybody knows about uh, the fruits of the Spirit. But I'm going to show you what happens. What happens when when you are in a situation, when you're, one of those three things are being fed or all three are being fed. So, you're going to look at, here's how it works. So, let's say that the practical understanding of this, right? So, let's, let's, let's go through it. Let's try to look at it from three different parts. Since it's lust of the yes, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride in one's life. Since those three things are present, here's here are the things that you, you're basically going to be comforted by in those three areas. Now, what I mean by that is once you start feeding those things, it's because you're feeding a comfort. You're trying to find a way to feel comfortable living in a world that's pushing back against you. So unless you start doing what the world is doing, you're going to be uncomfortable. That's how it works. So either you're going to have to find comfort in Christ, which means going against what the world is doing, which means not feeding those three things, and that is a daily battle. But let me explain to you What's happening when you feed those three things? What happens and what starts to display inside you or the things that you now latch on to that you know is wrong comes out of Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now watch this. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, basically means you know, getting, you know, far, abusing of medicines and things of that nature, hatreds, Strife, division, things like that, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, 
carousing in any similar, I tell you about these things in advance, as I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Did you hear that? So though you are now saved, brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is yours. It's a guarantee you ain't got to worry about that. What you do have to concern yourself with is when you start feeding those three things, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of one's lifestyle, those things I just read manifest, become tangible and real. You start to feed those things. It's those things will start, those are the fruits that you're starting to bear. You start noticing your inside gossip now. You start watching shows that are not feeding you spiritually. You start speaking in, in, in a way that, 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 that Christians be like, man, I th you shouldn't say stuff like that. Sleeping around, adultery, flexible morals. No, that's just how we play the game. You know, you hear that a lot, don't you? Life's a game. Life ain't no game. If life's a game, then you're going to lose a hell of a lot more than you think. It's not a football. Life ain't no football game because life there's, life doesn't live. It's living life, does, does, that's, not, that's nothing. You have to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you just live in day to day, you're not living, you're dying slowly. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna live every day, the, shit, the only way that's gonna work, brothers and sisters, is in Christ. Which means you cannot feed those three things. You want the keys to peace? They've been given to you. The problem is you're trying to fit it into a door that doesn't work. You're trying to put God's peace in a in a in a key lock that's not turning, and you're trying to hammer it in and force it in. Doesn't work because with the place that you're trying to unlock. Is a lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride is one's life. If you feed any of those three things, you'll never experience God's peace. You'll go through the rest of this life miserable, suffering, confused about your purpose. There's no confusion about your purpose, not with God. But if you're living in those in, in the flesh and you're feeding those three things, you're going to be disconnected from God. Just by you, by you, can, you can't hear him. God still has you, but you're not going to be able to hear him. And that is such an uncomfortable thing. But I'm going to leave you with this. Imagine all, all of y'all that have parents and loved parents and loved ones and things of that nature. When you were a child, or any friend, you can be a friend, you know, somebody's friend. Doesn't it feel good to be accepted and loved by someone that are patient with you, that are loving you? It doesn't cause you to compromise your morale structure. It doesn't cause you to compromise anything. God's not, a, it's not going to compromise his morals to suit you to have temporary peace on this earth. When God gave you eternal and permanent peace in Jesus Christ. So basically the most practical step we can look at is, which one are you going to choose? Well, it's hard. You know, Eric, I mean, I understand, you know, I, I feel alone and, and I feel lonely and I feel like I'm struggling every day, and I'm just, are you, I get those things. I, I hear you, brothers and sisters. But is your struggle because your, 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 your focus is on lust of the eyes? Is, is your struggle coming from the fact that you can't satisfy your flesh with, that because you want to satisfy your flesh? That's sickening, right? You want to satisfy your flesh? You want to satisfy your eyes? You want to satisfy your prize in one lifestyle? You have to compromise them. You gotta close your Bible up and, and 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 hope God ain't looking. But He is looking. So the practical step is simple. Are you gonna follow Jesus Christ and start to partake that peace that He gives you? And how can we partake in that peace? By denying the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of one's lifestyle. This is Pastor Eric. You can find me also on. YouTube, uh, UNHD TV. You can search me on iHeartRadio as well as iTunes under Pastor Eric Miller and UNHD. I want to thank you all for having patience and, and, and loving me and, and keeping me in your prayers. It's been a long road, but uh, we're, it, it still could be a long road, to be, to be honest with you. You know, we're all in that road. But I just want to say it feels so much, it feels so much better to have you, my family and friends, and all of those uh, you supportive listeners. I love you very much. Know that I'm praying for you. If you have a prayer need, please reach out in all the channels that I have. There's so many different ways you can reach me. Please exhaust them all. 
I want to hear from you, continually hear from you. I love you very much. It's Pastor Eric in Jesus' precious name. Thank you so much. Love you. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.